mushroom is a vroom vroom hey mushroom. Hello YouTube, Marcus Moreiser here. So, I completely missed the Smash DLC prediction train. Which is honestly fine by me as my predictions were 100% wrong. But, with the recent announcement of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, as unwieldy as that name is, I might have better luck. I've wanted to make a Mario Kart related video for some time, but outside of a script I've got lying around somewhere for a Rainbow Road ranking, I haven't been able to commit to much. And while that would be a lot more suited for my recent video style, motivation struck upon watching that overview trailer. You see, I already see 8 Deluxe as the best racing game ever made. Any legitimate competition just got blown away by the announcement that it will double in size, essentially becoming Mario Kart Ultimate. So here's how this works. First, I'm going to be selecting 6 courses from each previous title to put in the DLC, including those already confirmed for the first wave. Will it actually be this evenly split? Probably not, but I feel I'll get the better over-under for the individual titles this way. Second, I'll be placing them in cups. Although this part is entirely arbitrary, if I happen to get any of this right, I will be amused and surprised. But at the very least, you can use this video as a bingo card. Just keep this in mind, this isn't about my personal favorites necessarily. This is about tracks I honestly feel they would use that have room to thrive with the updated mechanics of Mario Kart 8, as well as an attempt to avoid redundancy with existing tracks and my own selections. Okay, no more rambling, not even a racing pun, let's get started. Super Mario Kart only has 8 different track themes in the entire game, and 2 of them are already in 8, Donut Plains and Rainbow Road. For the remaining 6, I had to pick the best one of each, so here's what I got. Mario Circuit 2 won for clashing the least with GBA Mario Circuit. Ghost Valley 1 barely beat out 3, Bowser Castle 3 has a lot of interesting split lane areas, Choco Island 2 is just better designed, Koopa Beach 2 is just more interesting, and Vanilla Lake 1 is probably the worst Mario Kart track ever, and hence has the most room for improvement. I wish I had more to say, but it's Super Mario Kart. Choco Mountain is confirmed and four others are in the base game, so my options are limited. Wario Stadium is the only course from the game never to be remastered, so let's throw it here. Frappe Snowland could use a touch-up since we saw it on DS, Calamari Desert remains thematically unique in the series, and DK's Jungle Parkway has a nice jungle sunset feel. Rounding this out is Bowser's Castle, which was the only unique course left, but it still has a lot to work with regardless. The Black Sheep of Mario Kart has some interesting tracks to offer, starting with the already confirmed Sky Garden. The ones that immediately came to mind were Broken Pier and Lakeside Park. They have a lot of remaster potential, more so than their counterparts Boo Lake and Riverside Park. Cheap Cheap Island risks some redundancy, but is saved by a sunset theme. Bowser Castle 4 has yet to be remastered somehow, and has this really cool Magma Factory theme. And finally, Rainbow Road. I hate this one. So much. But it has more room to be helped by the mechanics of 8 than any other track in the series, even more so than Vanilla Lake 1 from before. As much as I don't want to go back there, I do think they'll fix this. And I'm hoping I'm right. Double Dash has a lot of untapped potential, but a lot of the best stuff has been seen before. Luigi Circuit could be a lot of fun combining the anti-gravity and the two-way lane. Daisy Cruiser is always delightful and could actually really work here. DK Mountain is a fan favorite shoe-in, and you can do a lot while remastering the urban maze of Mushroom City. This leaves Wario Coliseum, which could receive a similar adjustment that N64 Rainbow Road got, or kept with the two-lap structure while taking full advantage of the cage in anti-gravity. 
And lastly, the course I'm probably the least confident about today, Rainbow Road. I needed a sixth for the format, and Bowser's Castle was a little too close to other tracks I felt far more comfortable about in later games. Other options were too similar to courses that were already in 8 to begin with. If Double Dash gives up a slot to another game, it would make a lot of sense. But since I can't predict who it will give that to, I'm going to stick with Rainbow Road. We begin my childhood with the already confirmed Shroom Ridge. I'll admit it was difficult to shake my nostalgia on this one, but I find a lot of people feel the same way on a few courses in particular. So, I have no hesitation including Airship Fortress, Peach Gardens, and Waluigi Pinball. But before you call me self-indulgent, remember, not everything is going to be a fan favorite. Hence why instead of the also popular Delfino Square, I am choosing Mario Circuit. It's surprisingly not that redundant with the other versions, certainly less than figure 8 circuit, and you could do something with the dirt road at the end. Last up is the first track that came to mind when I decided to do this project, Bowser Castle. Every section of this course offers so much potential for the modern Mario Kart mechanics. In the interest of time, I'll simply point out that it takes priority over Rainbow Road, which might have pioneered anti-gravity for the series, but just doesn't offer much else. Coconut Mall's taken, so there goes the world's easiest 20 bucks. Fans have been clamoring for the return of Toad's Factory, and I completely agree. On top of that, Maple Treeway and Koopa Cape would be perfect for the new mechanics, as overplayed as those courses can be at times. Speaking of which, Mushroom Gorge did not make the list, since I needed to go with something a lot more mundane, namely Daisy Circuit, an underrated and generally pleasant course with room to expand upon. And to round things off, I was left in a bit of a pickle since every remaining course would be redundant with either 8 or Tour. I settled on DK Summit, since it might have a similar theme to Mount Wario, but the gameplay is vastly different. Toad Circuit Well, if they're diving into the bland, I'm compensating. Woohoo Loop is my first pick as it is more interesting than Maka Woohoo in a non-glitchy kind of way. Wario Shipyard is another reliable pick, and Shy Guy Bazaar has a very unique feel to it in the series, that being of a... well, bazaar. Next up is Rock Rock Mountain, which I feel does stand apart from something like Shy Guy Falls. Lastly, Bowser's Castle, one of the biggest reasons my Double Dash list is what it is. This does a lot of similar things to that version, but bigger, more interesting, and with room to throw an anti-grab without turning it into the Wii U version. Oh, on that note... Fun fact! Every single Wii U course is already on the Switch. How generous. Paris Promenade, Tokyo Blur, Ninja Hideaway. Not a bad start, even from the perspective of someone who hasn't actually played on them. I'm treating every variation alike here since Nintendo appears to be doing the same. So what are my remaining three? Of the various city courses, New York Minute is the one that drew people in to play the game in the first place. London Loop feels like the most reliable one to follow. And to finish things up, the other completely original course, by tour standards at least, Merry Mountain. I'm not a holiday guy, but even I have to admit this course looks great and definitely stands out. That should do it. Now that I've finally listed all the courses, let's fill the board! Like I said before, this was completely arbitrary. I tried splitting things up to have some variety, only really ordering them around to keep myself from dumping everything from one game too close together. I do want to call attention to the spiny cup though, since I would really get a kick out of that if I'm right. Imagine, 
waiting for the final wave. People chomping at the bit to see what we get. And it's the worst Rainbow Road, a plain old Mario circuit, a thematic tour course, and the best track in series history. I would be laughing at that for a week. But yeah, take a good look, or check the description for a link to download a copy of the bingo card. Special thanks to Costa Melody for her Toad impression, and the Todd Star for talking this whole thing out with me. He's a Mario Kart geek as well, and it was a lot of fun deciding what to pick and where to make some sacrifices. We'll see over the next two years exactly how close I was to correct. Check out my recent content if you're interested, and subscribe if you want to see what I do next. This is Marcus Moreiser, signing off.